All right, uh, Internet peoples, welcome back. This is going to be Kenter at Your Own Risk, episode 27, part B, where Kent and Chris just kind of shoot the shit since it's been a fucking day and a half since we've done one of these. Um, Jesus, the last one we did was our Christmas one, wasn't it, Kent? It was, and I mean, fortunately, you know, eight months later, here we are. Yeah. You know. I mean, I'm not going to say you've been ducking me about the evil within. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. Um, I mean, so it's been eight months. Predominantly, I mean, we t- we talked about the, uh, uh, what is it, Fire and Blood? Fire and Dra- Game of Dragon. I don't know. The Game of Thrones second sequel series, prequel yeah. series, uh, pretty thoroughly in the first part. So, I don't know. Look, what have you seen horror wise genre wise you know since since christmas like that, right. that's been on your radar i i've seen a lot um I'll, I'll throw out the most recent thing that i saw it was uh based off a recommendation from a dude i play video games with who's in britain he asked me if i'd ever seen the 1985 movie demons which was produced by uh suspiria guy um dario argento there you go so, have you ever seen this movie before? It sounds familiar, but um, it, if if I did, I don't remember it off the top of my head. Well, first of all, let me just say that on my Roku, I just did the voice search for it, and up comes this app called Raygun, which is free movies with a couple of ads. Like, I think there's three or four ads. And it's like terrible movies from like specialty genres, such as horror, sci-fi, western, kung fu. I'm like... Well, this is a terrible app because I'm looking through the movies, and there was one whole other movie that I'd ever even heard of on this app. But I watched it. Um, interestingly enough, the subtitles by default were in Spanish. Uh, so I got to practice a little Spanish while watching. And Demons is the epitome of a zombie outbreak in a movie theater, only instead of zombies, they're demons that's the whole thing but it's fun like it's a fun movie and i would recommend it if you're in for the mood for something for an hour and a half it's not very long it's got a lot of cocaine it's got a lot of demons of uh, so many fake heads that they used uh and the soundtrack my goodness the soundtrack's impeccable interesting i, I don't like motley crew is in it um there was just some weird things that I'm just like, why are these? It just didn't make any sense for the. It felt like they spent probably eighty percent of the budget on music. Uh, I'm just trying to pull up Rick Springfield, Motley Crue, uh, Billy Idol. Like, right? They had to spend like their whole budget on that. So, so it was like current music at the time that it was interesting. Yeah, yeah. But it was an Italian film or made by Italian, but in English. Uh, and the best part is um, so there's this black dude that has, I think they're hookers or ladies of the night, I don't know. But his voice does not match his look. And he's amazing nonetheless, but it's just you know, you see a person and you expect a certain voice and you get something way out there. That's what this dude was. Um, I don't... Oh, yeah, I do remember how it ended. It ended very oddly, but it did end to a point where they have a sequel, which is also available on Raygun app, which I think I'm going to watch. Uh, overall, it was an enjoyable experience, and dare I say I recommend it if you're in the mood for something cheesy, lighthearted. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the other, I, there's plenty of plenty of movies on, on my that I've watched that I've already probably forgotten. We, you and I, haven't discussed the remake of Firestarter yet, right? Uh, no, I haven't seen it yet. Well, Chris, this is a dark day for us. Uh, is it? Uh, is it because from what I'm hearing, it might be if, uh, like it might be I dodged something by not seeing it yet. Uh, so, without spoiling, I will say this. The ideas that they had were actually not bad be- 
because, as you know, I'm a fan of uh, a remake changing enough things to be different, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so they just said, screw it, we're not going to have any grade A actors, although Zac Efron surprisingly was good. And it's funny, the only other like known actor, as far as I'm concerned, was Kurt Wood Smith, and he played Wanless. And if you go back to the original Firestarter, Wanless was like one of the only main roles that was not played by a well-known actor. Um, unfortunately, he only has two scenes, three scenes, I guess, technically, and they're all amazing. They steal the show. Uh, but Wanless, as you know, isn't really a huge part of the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, there was there was some stuff that gained a lot of criticism that I understand, and I wish it wasn't the focus of the criticism, uh, such as the cat being he, she, or them, uh, as if the cat can choose its sexual nature. I, it was a very weird thing that triggered so many people. To me, it just triggered me in the fact that I'm like, I don't think cats really sit there and think about whether they want to be a guy or a girl. Uh, that 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 was my perspective. Uh, if, if anything, I would imagine cats sit there and think that they're just both automatically. Yeah. Like, they're, they're like, I'm a fucking cat. <laughs> I can lick my balls or my asshole. I don't need... <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. So that was such like a, this like pinnacle for like uh, complaining. So if you take that out of there and then you just focus on what we do have... Uh, we have quite a few missed opportunities. We have a an ending that I would say probably like 20 to 30 minutes remaining. I'm sitting there going, you know what, if we're going to change this, I want this ending. And they actually gave me that ending in a certain way, which I was appreciative of. And it does leave room for a sequel. But <sighs> there was so much awesome violence in the original. So many fire blasts, like, the farm scene was incredible, right? Like, she just unleashes on everybody that shows up. We Mm -hmm. don't get hardly, like, any... anything like that. We don't get the big ending like we did in the original. So for all this budget and technology, CGI, anything and everything that we have available, they're like, let's severely tone down everything that was cool. I think that's a missed opportunity. And the final thing I'll complain about is, if you remember, whether in the book or in the movie, one of the big things was how um, the father wanted to get this story out to the New York Times, because it was important that the shop got told on or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of like a big theme. And in the end, you know, uh, the the old guy, I can't think of his name, the old farmer takes uh, Charlie. To, to the New York Times. Now, obviously, that wouldn't be a big thing in 2020-whatever. But they had this perfect opening uh, early on where they're like, we don't have internet. So I thought that somehow they were going to integrate that to like them turning the story to like some internet news site. And they just never did anything with revealing the story about the shop. And I, I, I don't know. It felt like a really big missed opportunity as far as I was concerned. So, aside from that, it's still watchable. It really is. I, I don't hate it. Uh, I've seen it twice now. I'd watch it again. I, I don't hate it. So, maybe I'm in the minority, though. I, I could be, because I think I was in the minority on liking the remake of Candyman. Yeah. Um, and you didn't like Pet Cemetery, which, yeah, you just basically like the opposite of the majority. Which is nothing, nothing to be wrong. Nothing, to, nothing wrong with it. Sometimes you gotta zig when everybody else is zagging, man. But yeah, I mean, otherwise you get hit by lightning. That, that's right. Uh, you know, or, I, I try or not a chud. to take. T- I mean, I, I just I, you never know which one's. Good. <laughs> I, I try not to take too much stock into reviews that are coming out because I, I just find that so many people are reviewing are looking at things that I don't care about. So. It's not that they're right or wrong. It's just I don't care about, like, what they're complaining about, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I know that Black Phone is on Peacock, and that is something 
As long as it's going to be available in October, I'm holding out until October. That and Prey. Those are the two big ones I need to watch in October. Which, oh, Prey. Yeah. Okay, I was I was thinking P-R-A-Y, not P-R-E-Y. Right. I've got I've that on my phone to watch. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, I've heard good things about it, too. Um, all right, any, any big other big ones? Because I've got some I would like to question you about and then some that I have seen. Okay, well, that answers the black phone. I can cross that off my list. Have you seen Black Phone? I have not, but I really want to because A, I like Ethan Hawke, B, I like Scott Derrickson, and C, I like Joe Hill. Right. So, yeah, it has everything going for it. And I've heard it's actually got pretty good reviews uh, by and large. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, there's probably more, but right off the top of my head, I, uh, I'm i trying to think of anything else. Like, I can't think of anything big that came out in horror that... I, I, haven't, I haven't really seen too much horror since the last one. I've... I've I haven't really seen too much, period. I've been mostly either watching shows with my wife or keeping up with, like, sci-fi, superhero kind of stuff. Sure. I did see the new Scream. And? Um, it's hard for me to, to, to rate it because I had the ending, like, I had the killer spoiled for me before I saw it. Oh. So, yeah, so does- yeah, I, I, knew, I knew who they were already, so... I didn't think it was bad. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't think they ne- necessarily like shit on the legacy characters. I don't think they, they did as much with, like, Sydney as they could have. I think they did a decent amount with, with Gale and Dewey. Isn't, was it Courtney Cox that's refusing to do Scream 6, right? No, no, it's Nev Campbell. Oh, Nev, okay. Because they, uh, they lowballed her. I think they offered her less than they did than she got paid to do Scream 1. Oh. Well, that's... That's just bad business, really. Like, she is a face of the franchise. Yeah, I mean, Sydney Prescott is the fucking... You know, um... Shit, what's what's the fuck's Jamie Lee Curtis's name in... (laughs) Oh, Laurie uh, Strode. Yeah, she's, she's the Laurie Strode of the fucking... That series, you know, right? Uh, actually, speaking of which, did you have you seen Halloween Kills yet? Because I still haven't. I haven't. I, I heard again that it's the, the the like the best and the worst that I've heard about it is basically that it's the middle one. Right. It, it doesn't sound like it was as good as the first one in this trilogy because I. Yeah. Keep it straight with the name makes no sense at this point. But Yeah, so but I mean at this point I'm just kinda of like, I'll wait till the third one's out and then I'll just kinda of binge all three of them together instead of Right. I mean, especially because it was year by year, instead of you know having to wait like two or three years in between installments. Exactly. So yeah, I, I can't really think of many other I mean you and I already talked about Malignant, which did I watched you, again. Yep. I don't and, remember, did you see Midnight Mass? I did not. Okay. I think I recommended it to you. I didn't know if you had seen that. Yeah, that's definitely worth watching. Midnight Mass? Yeah, it was the thing Mike Flanagan did on Netflix after uh, House of uh, Haunting of Blind Manor. Okay, so, yes. I remember you talking yep. about that. Um, and did you see... Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, that answers that one. Uh... You know what? Jor- Jordan Peele needs to... I, I don't know. Like I want to see something of his that I really, really like. And Candyman, as of now, is the best. And he didn't direct that. He just produced it. He just produced it, yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that Nope is... It seems like it's going to be more fun and quirky than the previous two films. So I might, if it's fun, uh, which I think... You know, Jordan Peele is, is a funny dude, so if he can combine a little bit more comedy with his horror, I think that would be his sweet spot, really. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you would expect it, but he came out swinging like he's fucking trying to be the new Clive Barker. Yeah. Now, did you see Nope or no? I haven't, no. Okay. No, I haven't, I haven't been to the theater at all this year. Yeah, me, me neither. Uh, last what thing ab- I saw was uh, Spiral. What about the Resident Evil show? Wait, there's a show? They did a Netflix show. It's like, dude, it was, it's been like rated like, 
<laughs> the worst thing out this year. Like, I'll be really surprised if it doesn't take a bunch of Razzies. Uh, that's on Netflix as well? Yep. All right. I'm 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 taking notes here. So, as you know, uh, I mean, as it is, I haven't even watched Stranger Things yet or Umbrella Academy, so I'm really behind. On stuff. Okay, so that answers those two. <laughs> what about um, The Boys Season 3? I haven't watched Boys Season 1, 2, or 3, so... All right, so me. the answer is that. Jesus, Kent. Um, the Sandman, which just came out on Netflix, was really good. It's definitely worth a watch. And there... There are some definitely a couple episodes that vie into like vi past creepy and almost into the horror genre. What adjacent what is it based is it's not based off like the Marvel character, right? No, it's based off of the D C character. <laughs> um, I didn't know there was a DC character. Okay. But it was it was in the one of the first things in their adult line, the Vertigo comics. Oh. So oh. so stuff like Preacher, Sandman, Hellblazer, which was the the Constantine comic. I, I'm glad you mentioned DC. I did watch the Batman recently. Oh yeah, that was. I didn't think about it. And yeah, that was good. I liked it a lot. I all right. I, I hope this doesn't sound like criticism because it really isn't. It's the second worst Batman movie I've ever seen, but I've liked every Batman movie I've ever seen aside from Batman and Robin. What would you put... I mean, is that the only one that you would put worse than that? I I would, just because I really liked all the other ones, and I really would have liked 30 minutes cut from the Batman. I I liked that it went from, you know, the usual schlocky action comic book stuff to, like, a a mystery type thing, which I (laughs) I really liked that they did that. I liked the acting. I I mean, I I really can't believe I'm going to say this, but I I liked What's-His-Face as Penguin. Uh, Colin Farrell? Yeah, I don't normally like Colin Farrell, but I really liked him in this. Uh, I, I liked the acting. I, I liked the story. It just, it really could have been cut a little bit and been a lot more pleasant, I, I feel. Okay. Uh, I won't I won't fight you over that. I mean, I'll, 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 I will say, yeah, it was a long movie. It, but it was really good. I, I thought Pat's had... Did yeah, I uh, well. you know I'm glad that Robert Pattinson has been able to separate himself from Twilight. Um, do you think? <clears throat> and I don't even know. Maybe this has already been announced. <clears throat> are they going to save the Joker for the third one in the trilogy, or do you think they're going to make Joker the main one in part two? I think they're saving him. I I mean we, we've already seen him. I don't, well, yeah, so, we've I don't seen know. him. I think we're going to see him again in another small role. I, I think he's. I don't think he's going to be the main villain until part I, three. I really hope not, because f- I'm t- fucking tired of the Joker. Especially since we're getting a sequel to the Joker movie. With uh, Joaquin? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, That's I mean, the if, greatest thing I've heard all day. So if we did that, and then the Joker's also the villain in, in the Batmans, I'm like, you know, Batman's got such a huge fucking rogues gallery of what are basically all intense, you know, fucking super-powered serial killers. And yet, nine out of ten times, they just go with the fucking Joker. Joker, Joker, and Joker. Yes, the Joker's popular, but if you ever fucking used anybody other than the Joker, you might get more popular. You know, not necessarily more popular than the Joker, but, you know, you would have right. two popular villains instead of just one that you fucking try to mine for every single fucking bad guy ever. That's what I really liked about Batman Begins. I loved Scarecrow. As an on-screen villain, I I just thought he was incredible. I liked what they did with Bane. I yeah, I, I liked Ross Al Ghul. You know, I mean. Oh yeah, yeah. John. Oh, by the way, John Turturro in Batman. Yeah, Batman. he's fucking. <sighs> and I really liked what they did with with um the Riddler. You know, like, no, I'm I'm fucking helping you, man. <laughs> I'm not a bad guy. I'm fucking helping you, Batman. <laughs> The the Riddler was a little hit and miss for me at times, but I thought he really shined when he like the, him and Batman had that prison scene. Yeah. Oh, I, that's where he really knocked out of the park for me uh, as, as an actor. I thought. And like the voice was what killed it for me a couple times, you know. Like, but but yeah, I, I liked it. I like and I like Paul Dano. Like I, 
one of the things I just watched and I fucking loved was Everything Everywhere All at Once. I haven't seen it anywhere. D- 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 dude, it, it's it's fucking worth. I mean, I, I everybody was saying, you know, this is a really good movie. So when it came out on DVD, I was like, hey, honey, when you go buy groceries this week, can you pick up a a DVD for me from Walmart? She's like, oh, what is it? I'm like, Everything Everywhere All at Once. She's like, what? I'm like, Everything Everywhere. All anyways um dude it was the action scenes were fucking awesome the comedy was funny michelle yo was awesome the uh the guy who plays her husband who was um short round in temple of doom and and data and the goonies you know he hasn't done anything since then he was fucking awesome and and it dude i didn't realize it was gonna be this just touching but like i was fucking crying for like 40 minutes straight at the end of the movie i was like oh my god i love you mom i'm sorry (laughs) (laughs) is that on anything streaming that you know of uh i don't think it's i don't think it's anything on anything streaming for free i think it's one of the ones where it's like available for rent or buy on prime and that kind of shit but you know I mean, it's, that's that's one that I would say, hands down, is worth buying on like Blu-ray. Okay. Um, oh. but I was go- I I segued into that because Paul Dano, who played the Riddler, uh, was in the the one that the guys who directed it did right before that, Swiss Army Man. I don't know that either. Dude, that movie was fucking awesome too. He 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 gets stranded on an island, you think, and. Yeah, you know, he has nothing, nothing or nobody. And his, his version of um, what the fuck was the, uh, the volleyball and Castaway, Wilson. Well, his his version of Wilson, he finds Daniel Radcliffe's dead body, who talks to him, and he uses as basically like a, a Swiss Army knife. Like at one point, he's he's going to drown because he or not drown, he's going to. Uh, He's he's running out of water, and he starts pumping Daniel Radcliffe's arm, and like the corpse just starts spewing like pure water out of him. It's it's real. He gets the corpse to you know release some of its dead fart gas, and he uses it as like a jet ski to ski around the island. It's, dude, it's fucking weird, but it's it's a really good movie. I, I see it's done by A twenty four, which that studio just keeps putting out quality stuff. I feel. Yeah, yeah, I I would agree. I haven't watched Antlers yet. Is that something you've seen by any chance? You know, I I haven't seen it yet either. Um, I don't, I, I've heard mixed things. Like, I've heard it's just not as good as what it could have been. So we'll have to see. I think it's on Disney Plus to watch, actually. So interesting. Uh, um, so I got to quickly mention, did you know that, like, in Britain, if you just get – they don't have Hulu. So you get Disney Plus and you get, like, everything that's, like – the Disney bundle, so Hulu, so like you can watch horror stuff on Disney Plus in Britain. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Antlers is on Disney Plus, I think. Dude. Um. Uh, yeah. Looking this up. Anyways, um, to to go with Disney Plus a little bit. Uh oh, no, it's on HBO Max. I've got that. Close. Oh, you know, fuck. Disney Plus. Anyways, um, <laughs> I watched Miss Marvel, and I just want to bring that up because I, a lot of people shit on it, and I think for, if you come at it from the perspective of like, this is not a show aimed at me, a forty-three-year-old middle-aged fat white guy, but you look at it like this is a show for a like sixteen-year-old Muslim girl. I think it was a fucking great show, but. It- well, the a lot of people. Like the um, did you play the? It's the game on Xbox. It's a Marvel game, and you play as Miss yeah, Marvel. Yeah, uh, Avengers. Yeah, like a little bit. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I didn't finish it by any means, but like when I saw the trailer for the show, I was like, "Oh, that reminds me of the game." And Dude, they I did had a some. Good time. They did some really cool things with it. Like, she would be like doodling, and like they would show the doodles as animations in the background. Well, well, she's. I mean, there's just a lot of really creative choices, and it actually, I think, ended up being one of the like. I've watched all of the um, Marvel Disney Plus shows. I think it was actually one of the best ones. Although, I've only seen two. Although I really liked um, 
Moon Knight as well, because fucking Oscar Isaac's performance in that was fucking awesome. And Ethan Hawke. <laughs> yeah. The, the fucking beginning when he's putting all the glass into the slippers. I, I haven't watched it yet. That's not what oh. I'm into. Unfortunately, oh. but I it is on the I want, I do want to see all of them. Like I've put off, I can't even watch Doctor Strange until I see WandaVision. So I'm like, okay, well uh, that crosses that one off then. I I, I, I saw Lo, the whatever Loki show was, mm-hmm. um, and the the animated What If I loved that series. That was good. Yeah, that was really good. And I okay. love um, what the Jeffrey Wright. Yep. As, like, the narrator. And he was As the, the watcher, yeah. So, okay, then my last thing I wanted to bring up is, have you seen the trailers for Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities? No, but I'm glad you brought him up, because that'll be my next thing. But go on. He, well, uh, he's it's it's a series they're doing in Netflix. I don't know if they're going to do more than one season, but uh, it's coming out in October. Um, I think there's eight episodes, and I think he's executive producing, but I think it's, you know, like different directors for all of the, uh, the episodes. Okay. I, I, I can get behind that, uh, no doubt. Uh, and um, from, from what I saw, because they, they did the... Um, it's got a good cast, too. Andrew Lincoln, Ben Barnes, Gina Davis, Crispin Glover, F. Murray Abraham, Tim Blake Ooh. Nelson, Peter Weller... Essie David, yeah, it's got a fucking Wait, great cast. Was it Tim Tim Blake Nelson, the c- cool dude in Watchmen that I liked, Silver Mask? Uh, Tim Blake Nelson was the he was the the one brother in Oh Brother Where Art Thou? Oh, okay, I'm thinking of some yeah. some other guy then apparently. Um, no, that's the same dude, wasn't it? Wait, you're thinking about Rorschach? No, he was no. Uh, Looking Glass in Watchmen, the series. Well, yes, okay. I, I, you're talking series, I'm thinking movie. I fucking hated that series. Fair enough. Yes, yes he was. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, at least I think three of the episodes were um, written by Lovecraft. All right. Are we ever getting another Lovecraft country, county, grand... Country, no, that, right? that 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 got canned. Huh. I would. I, I kind of want to see. It's it hard before. to. It's hard to understand. Like, I don't know why they canned it because, as much as I didn't like parts of that, like, I liked other parts of that, and it was really well received. So, uh, maybe it was either either like just a racist decision to cancel it, or maybe it was a really expensive show to do. I don't know. I'm not sure about that one. I, I just wanted to see where they were, would go with a season two. I, I guess that was more my curiosity than anything else. Yeah. So, you mentioned Guillermo, and mm-hmm. I, this my favorite movie of the year, uh, and I failed to mention this earlier, Nightmare Alley. I think it's still on Hulu. Oh, uh, okay. Or actually it says on IMDb, it's on HBO Max now, so maybe it's Yes, on that. I believe it is. Okay. Have you seen it? No, and I haven't seen the original either. I didn't know there was an original, but that's okay. Uh, honestly, this is easily the best acting performance I've seen of Bradley Cooper, which doesn't say a lot, but um, it, it really was. It has an amazing cast. Um, it it definitely feel, has a little bit of um, the prestige to it, but with a Carney show first half, which, you know, me and Carney shows, I'm, I'm all in on that. Willem Dafoe. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you got Richard Jenkins and Mary Steenburgen back together, you know, from Step Brothers. I'm happy <laughs> to see those two. Uh, Tony Collette. I, I've gained so much appreciation for her over the years. Um, yeah, she's a really good actress. Basically, I, I completely knocked her off the, the pedestal after Sixth Sense due to my hatred of that film, but she has won me over. Uh, so... Yeah, I, I highly, highly... If I walk away recommending any one thing, it is Nightmare Alley, and I hope I'm not overhyping it, but how do you go wrong with Ron Perlman and Willem Dafoe in the same thing? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's... Shit. The the one thing that I, I... I did go to the movie once this year, and I fucking loved it, and it was um, 
I went and saw Top Gun Maverick. I've heard nothing but really positive. Dude, it was about it. fucking awesome. It was it was a modern modernization of an old IP where they honored and respected the original IP that it came from and they didn't shit on the old characters and they didn't shit on the new characters to make either batch look better. What if I don't really care for the original and find it overrated? I I still think you would and it's a good movie. It's Okay. The 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 fucking action scenes are way better than they were in the original one. You know, um and it's it was just nice to see like they like they they let Maverick grow up without completely changing him. But you know, like a lot of places if they were going to do one, oh, Maverick would be the same character that he was cuz you know, it's we've been so long we have to so he he'd be making stupid mistakes, you know. He'd be you know buzzing the tower, you know, to you know for the flyby just to get in trouble, just to do it, to do it kind of shit. And they they didn't they they you know he gets in trouble, but he gets in trouble for you know adult reasons rather than you know like the same mistakes he made in a movie twenty seven years ago or whatever it was. Um, and like like I said, they. The new characters weren't like super super fleshed out, but they didn't like neglect them in order to make Tom Cruise shine, and they didn't shit on Tom Cruise in order to make them shine. It was just really refreshing to see all of that baked into a movie with like the best aerial stunts I've fucking seen ever. So I, I Jennifer, really have heard nothing but good things about it. So. And Jennifer Connelly is super fucking hot still. Yeah, you know, so she's still. She's still Dre, okay? That that that's my highest compliment. <laughs> All right, man. I uh, I don't know if I have anything else to add at this point. I, I think that's pretty much been like eight months of solid media consumption. I've been playing a lot of Destiny, so I I've gone through my fair number of really small games and tried avoiding big games, aside from. Uh, you know, the Tiny Tina game that came out, I was naturally going to go through. But, um, I don't know, I've just played a lot of short indie titles that kind of keep my interest for a few hours. Like, I- I'm embarrassed to say this, but Power Wash Simulator has I saw been- you playing that the other day, and I lost a lot of respect for you. <laughs> Dude, with, with my... The- Alright, so basically, like... Mental health has not been my strong suit this whole year. So this is why I've been kind of radio silent for months now. Uh, just hasn't been my strong suit. So anytime that I can find something that is remotely relaxing in some therapeutic way, I kind of gravitate towards it. And that has been therapeutic as hell, and I don't know why. I, you just go around power washing things. Uh but I like it, so I've really enjoyed that. I've uh, been playing Fall Guys with Eric and Carrie um, and Tuan, and I don't know, there's been any number of like smaller games that I've found just to kind of uh, get a hold of the whole time thinking, you know, next time I talk to Chris, he's definitely not going to bring up the evil within. Definitely not. Yeah, definitely not, no. I've, um, been, um, I've been playing a... Like a lot of Destiny with my brother, you know, but um, I've been playing a lot of, I want to say, yeah, I guess mostly indie stuff on Game Pass, which I love. You know, that, um, it's perfect. It's the best value in gaming, as far as I'm concerned. Like, I'm I'm almost finished with Weird West. I've been playing through that one. And that's uh, probably, like, the closest to, like, a, I think that's, like, a double A, like, to a big release that I've been playing lately on there. But, yeah, I've got, like, a bunch of little things from... on from Game Pass on there, like Death Store, Nobody Saves the World, Loot River, Unsold, Dreamscaper, Guacamelee 2, yeah, so nothing under... T- Tina, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game? Oh, we played through that so much, loved it. Yeah, yeah I, so I, I mean, I've been playing Loot all that River stuff. Um, I was bad at Loot River, but... Uh, I haven't, been, I haven't yeah. been good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I, I don't know, man. There, there's... Game Pass has been really uh, quality for me. I'm happy to have it just because you try out games that you're not even, sh- you'd never, ever, ever buy. You would never even pay $10 to try these games. 
but you find a couple hidden gems along the way, and then, you know, Back for Blood was fun for a few weeks. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I checked out the Avengers game. I didn't play too much into it, but, like, um, I played a, a bunch of the, again, smaller stuff like that, like Record of Lotus War, Deed Lit, and Wonder Labyrinth, um, a game called Olegia, uh Hollow Knight. You know, they had the whole thing oh, there. Hollow De- Knight, yeah. Dead Cells, you know, so... Yeah. Uh, oh, Trek, did- Trek to Yomi. Trek to Yomi was awesome. It was like watching... It was like playing a movie. Yeah. So, speaking of that, they're removing at the end of the month uh, What Remains of Edith Finch. If you haven't watched... If you haven't played it, please download it. Play through it I, while you can. I think I have, like, a copy of that through through Twitch. Okay. You know, I think I have a copy of that through... Um, uh, like a Steam giveaway sometime. I have a copy of that for Epic Game, the Game Store free giveaway. Okay. So, so you got so, it. Yeah, yeah, I've got a, I've got a couple versions of it. I, I can't strongly recommend it because of the stuff that I know you're into mm-hmm. and the stuff that I'm into. It's everybody's just like, oh, it's a walking simulator, and to those people, I just want to punch them in the throat. Uh, it's far more than that. It's a compelling story with a lot of creative uh, situations. So, like, every single story is told in a different art style, different manner. I mean, they even go back to, like, a, a creep show vibe for one of the stories, which is awesome. So Interesting. I, I can't recommend a five-hour game more than that game, I, I don't think. Uh, uh, tomorrow we're doing um, the new – well, I'm – old raid and destiny is coming to destiny too so my brother wants to do go for like the the it's they, they call it world's first we're not racing to be first but to finish in the first 24 hours so god i don't know how fucking long i'm gonna be stuck doing that and then uh one of my buddies jake like it told me he would let me borrow his playstation 4 and play bloodborne you know back in the day and then like two years later he had forgotten about it and so i kind of guilted him the other day just teasing him and then he shows up to work and he's like hey i got my playstation 4 i need you to put it in your car now so you can take it home and play bloodborne with me this weekend i was like you fuck now i was like now i'm guilted into <laughs> being stuck playing that right now did you get a chance to play elden ring at all oh or no? dude i i 100 percented elden ring with i i've hundreds of hours in. I don't even know how much because a lot of it I played offline. Um, yeah. I, I might, I might, you know, I have a job that I can actually play video games at work at. So I played a shit ton of fucking Elden Ring. Um, and okay. It only shows me having 158 hours online. So probably at least 450 to 500 hours. I am on new game plus three. I have a hundred percent of the achievements and I just actually started a new playthrough with a different character that I had my buddy transfer some equipment to. So my Leonidas looks like a Spartan running around with just a cloak and a spear on and a shield. Fair. But he's I, almost almost naked. Us. <laughs> I didn't complete the game. I just kept grinding and grinding, and I was like 300-some hours in. And I was like, I just want to have a bunch of equipment to mess around on playthrough too. Um and here's a funny story I think you'll appreciate it. So I finally got Raylene to try it, right? Mm-hmm. So we're doing the co-op. Things are going good. Uh, you know, you meet the first, like, shopkeeper inside that burnt-down church, be- you know, where the guy is on the horseback. Mm-hmm. Right in the beginning. And so we go over to the side to, like, start, you know, grinding for some stuff. Immediately get invaded by a guy that takes both of us out and just immediate rage quit. I'm like... What are the odds of getting invaded on the very first? It was awful. It was yeah. just awful, awful experience. So, yeah. Yep. Uh, and and even then, you know, like, I don't know about we were playing it on Xbox. Yeah, yeah. Eric and I played through most of it together. It, like playing on on PC, you know, where you you have people actually able to mod the game. They're even more cheaters. Oh yeah. yeah, that. So yeah. Um, so like, I would love to have been able to be like, "Hey, mom, you know, I will play through this with you. I'll, you know, I'll drag you through it. You know, I'll, but even then, you know, like, all it takes is getting invaded. You know, like I played with my nephew a little bit when we were, when it first came out, and yeah, it was a pain in the ass. You'd be fighting a boss, you know, because unlike most of them, you know, 
well, unlike all of the old ones, you know, you, you don't have the fog door necessarily to separate you from bosses since they're open world bosses now too. Right. I, I'll tell you this. This is easily the funniest thing that happened in Elden Ring for me and Eric. We were doing a, a, um, a dungeon, whatever, and we get invaded. So we discovered that we had that item where you can turn, turn yourself into furniture. So we waited by this elevator, and we're both chairs. And we're just <laughs> watching this guy. He's getting so mad. He runs past us like four or five times. We are dying laughing. This guy just has no clue, and eventually we snuck up and just killed him. But we had to just watch him get enraged the whole time. It, it was fantastic. I didn't do a lot of PvP, uh, and I, I played most of it by myself, so I didn't get invaded very often. But um, I didn't enough for the first two playthroughs to do the the Whiteface Vars questline. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and I remember one, I was doing this early, you know, in, in my first playthrough. So it was before they did a lot of the patches. So I invade, uh, and it was in the Altus Plateau. And this is before they put the, the map icons on to show you where the, the guy is. If you, oh, yeah. If you're the... Dude, I ran around for 45 minutes. I couldn't find the fucker. <laughs> And and then something randomly just killed him in the background and and uh you know, I got the I got the credit, but I was like I was like, this guy he's he's probably fucking turned himself into a bush in the middle of a fucking you know, some like little <laughs> shrubbery area or something because Yeah, it's it's the beauty of the game, but thankfully they did add the icons. I I don't I don't like the PvP. I I, I liked doing co-op though with Eric. Like we had a good time. Uh, yelled at a lot of the bosses that seemed unfair at first. Uh, you know, it was just just a great great experience. I, I it was you know one of the things I like about I've played almost every single Souls like now at this point. I like the feeling, you know, the exploration, you know, the, the risk versus reward. Like, do I do I turn back to the bonfire or do I keep going because I don't know what's coming? Right. And I loved the, the exploration of the open world added to that for Elden Ring. I mean, I do think it's fucking, it's probably like 30% too long. Especially having played through, you know, three complete playthroughs to get the three main endings you need for the the 100% of the achievements and that's only three out of the seven endings so I mean right uh, I'll tell you what I didn't like I didn't like that so like towards the end I was like oh, I'm gonna grind for every piece of armor every weapon which I did except um, you know like when the one place turns to stone or what you know everybody yeah. kind of, I'm like oh, I hate when something like that happens because that didn't, you know, I didn't know about it ahead of time, so I didn't farm for a couple of things, so now it's yeah, it eats away at my soul, just a little bit. Uh, but that's okay, more incentive. I, I had to take a break from it. I think I'll get back into it around November, December. Uh, I've, I've heard they're working on DLC, and it'll, if it's going to come out, it'll probably be out next year. So, I mean, I'm not going to go back too hard until until they do, you know, say either yay or nay for that. Oh yeah, if they if they say DLC, then I'll just really legit wait. I have no problem because that's a big file. I don't need it on my system all this time. I, I you know, a part of what I've been doing lately in the last couple of weeks is playing through um, stuff to try to get it off my my system because all of a sudden I looked after I updated Destiny one day and I was like, oh, I've only got five gigs left on hard drive A and. 35 gigs on hard drive B and I've got like <laughs> almost three terabytes. So it's time, time to, to clean up some of the stuff I've just got sitting there. Uh huh. I, I have the, I have the Xbox one series X. So that's a one terabyte plus a four terabyte. One is 98% full. The other one's 95% full. And I'm like, all right, I have to just get through some of these things that are taking up large quantities basically uh so actually that's a game that you know i don't know i don't think i was talked to you when i played through control but i really liked that game i don't know if you got a chance to play it i again that's another one i have on the epic game store but i haven't played yet uh 
it'd be worthwhile on a good P- PC, but seriously, so you know how everything kind of went bad last mm-hmm. fall. Uh, both my laptop that was a, PC, a gaming PC and my – I had like an old Alienware. Both are dead. I just have this like $500 laptop that I cannot game on, and so I've basically given up on PC gaming for the immediate future. Gotcha. So, yeah. All right, but. so my question is, how is um, is how's the website going? Is it still going? Uh, the website's still going. Uh, I gave a lot of consideration. I moved a lot of things around, and I have to... I have to move some other things to uh, depopulate the main site. What was happening was that it was getting so clogged up, everything was loading so slow. So I had to make uh, tiny branches off the main branch for, like, TV series so that basically I, I have it so previously it was, like, podcast and then everything written. But now everything written is now spiraling to TV series and films because films, I, I've reviewed so m- hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of films that it was just bad to navigate. So that's kind of sort of uh, my September is making sure everything's good to go come uh, October. And I definitely have something in store this year that I'm really excited for. I think I'm going to launch it next Friday, actually, the September 2nd. Uh, I've been waiting over a year to do it. Uh, I finally have everything needed to do it. Uh, so I'm very excited. It's kind of an old school project. I hope people will like it. Probably not. I don't care, though. It's... <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, I've long given up on giving a fuck about what people want. I do what I want, and if somebody likes it, cool. Because, you know, I, I'm happy when people like it. I just, there was a point in my life where I was like, oh, this series is coming out. This seems super popular. I should do it to try to get more hits. But I wasn't having fun, right? Uh, uh, so the whole point of my website is to have fun. Otherwise, it's work. So I'm yeah. not making money. So screw it. I'm, I'm going back to having fun. So I'll say it now. I'm doing finally Tales from the Crypt. Finally. The entire thing. Yeah, I, I have them all on DVD. They never released on Blu-ray. You can't even buy them on digital anymore. That's so gonna be that's gonna be awesome, man. I got all the artwork done. So each. Um, season has its own color palette um, that matches the DVD uh, box set. Um, we have it looks just like an original uh, EC comic uh, comic book cover. Um, I even do you remember Sarah Delvinary, Sarah Baldwin? Now? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, she was one of the people who was going to come over and hang out with me when I went to see my mom before I got COVID. Okay, so she came over last year and did a photo shoot with me so we could make the cover. Mm. Uh, and then I had hired an artist to do this thing, and I think it's kind of it, – it fits with everything Tales from the Crypt. It's our own original thing, but we did it, and it's bloody. It's got pizza. It's got a machete. It's got everything a man could really want. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited for that. And – I don't really care about much else. Like, I'm going to do my movies. I'm going to do that. I, I, I'm going to do this game, uh, this House of Dragon, and I'm going to get caught up on Stranger Things and Umbrella Academy. I don't really care about Walking Dead. I, I, I know I'm going to because it's only eight, eight episodes remaining, so i got to get back to it. I, I spent too much of my life to not get finish it off. But Tales from the Crypt is going to be, like, my fun project, so... That's, I guess that's my big announcement. Awesome, man. Um, well, we will be back next week for another uh, Are You Not Kentertain? Or, excuse me, Kenter at Your Own Risk, where we'll be talking about season episode two of season one of House of the Dragon. Um, hit up Kent Stuff at www.9deuce.com. And uh, I'm going to plug myself for once. Um, I've gotten probably up about 30 posts up on my my blog which is the black rose berserker at wordpress.com um 
it's basically just my Pathfinder campaign that I've been detailing. But uh, it would be nice to have more than the one person who checks out every single post I put and then never replies on anything. So <laughs> We will have a link for that in the blog for House of the Dragon. We'll, we'll do that so you get some more viewers. I appreciate it, man. And uh, also, I think the easiest thing, I don't use Twitter that much, but Instagram seems to post a lot of my stuff. So um, official 9 Deuce, I think, for both Twitter and Instagram for anybody that follows that way. And I'll keep posting some Chris stuff. Something I want to throw out there, if there's something horror-related that you want a podcast on because we do need new topics, um, if there's something, a franchise or a list that you may be interested in, we don't care if it's just one person that wants to hear it. We we don't care. We'll put in five yeah. hours. We don't care. Seriously. We'll do <laughs> we've we've done it. Yeah. Uh, how, how long so, was the Stephen King one? Oh, my God. Total? <laughs> I don't know, but I can't even tell you how many hours of prep work I put into it. So Seriously. It, it, it was amazing, though. So any, anyway, yeah. Uh, check out oh. all of that stuff. You know, what you know what I just fucking heard the other day, Kent? What? I was like, we'll have to update it. They're coming out with a Saw 10. Are they really? Yeah, by by the director of number six. So we'll have to see. Because okay. I liked six, but it definitely wasn't of, you know, like, Saw 1 quality. So It, it, was, it was actually kind of shit on, but it wasn't a bad movie. But by then, the f- series was getting shit on. So, it, yeah. yeah, I get it. But it had Eddie, Eddie Winslow from Family Matters. Yep. So Awesome. Good, good stuff. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, don't, also, I, don't, I don't think we need to do another five-hour one about the franchise no. after that. Something else I would like to possibly tackle at some point, if you're interested, is the Chucky series. Sure. Um, like the series series or like the movies? Or the, both? I think we could do both because right now there's only one season which had like six or eight episodes. And I'm pretty well adept with the films. I mean, I... We don't need to go that in depth like we usually do. Like, uh, we could probably make that into a two-hour podcast covering both things. Uh, that might be a fun idea. I don't know. Yeah, Just an idea. Yeah, I mean, um, we we will see. We'll have to. Yeah. We'll probably. I mean, at this point, doing one a week for the the TV show is going to be rough. So. Yes, I, I know, and of course, it has to cut into, into October. October. Yep. Yeah, that was my fear, but yeah. All right. Cool. Right. I am happy we did this. Yep, it was fun to do. It's good to talk to you, Kent. Internet, I hope you enjoy hearing our dulcet tones, and we'll be back next week. All right, see ya.